Welcome to What CEOs Talk About. Do you wonder what CEOs talk about behind closed doors? How they bring their vision to reality? How do they overcome and succeed through adversity? We share that and so much more with each episode. Now, let's get started with the show. Hello, everybody. My name is Martin Hunter. I am the host of What CEOs Talk About, where we translate vision into frontline strategies. Today, we're going kind of artistic and vision and hopes and mission with Anthony. Anthony, please, can you give us name, rank, serial number? What do you do for a living? Well, thanks for having me, Martin. My name is Anthony Mungiello. I am a co-founder and CEO of the Bulls and Apes Project. That is so cool. <laughs> I love the name. <laughs> for those who have watched, yes, I am sitting down. I had rugby practice yesterday for the first time in the season, and I got tackled pretty hard by a very strong athlete, female athlete, and uh, it just takes longer for me to adjust, so I'm sitting down today. Um, all right. A lot of uh, of you in the audience are asking for information, anything and everything that Anthony will be providing here. If you go to what CEOs talk about, you'll see books, resources, links to current and previous guests and their services and tools as well. So I know I drop always Monday.com, but there's other ones like uh, clip art and anyways, audio visual stuff, anything that CEOs or software that that we use and talk about the show is on there as well. And then any of the books and authors and the services that, uh, so Anthony's services will be posted on there. Great. Boom. Done. With that being said, uh, Anthony, what's the title of the show for today? So today's title is creating a world of unlimited opportunity. Oh, we're going to, Peel that onion. <laughs> We're going to peel that onion um, for the benefit of the audience and the context that we put around the story in the meat in the middle. Can you please tell us, you know, where were you born, where you come from, who is Anthony and kind of the story behind who the man is currently? Uh, so I was, I was born in uh, the Bronx, New York. Um, so I uh, raised by hardworking father, three jobs, loving mother, drove me to be my to be my best um so learned my work ethic from my father learned how to demand excellence from my from my mother and um more more importantly from both of them was about respect respecting mm. um those around you respecting those that came before you um so that that uh, element of respect was instilled in me very very early on um so that I went up moving out of the Bronx in in high school Went to um, a few different high schools, had a little bit of little bit of trouble in high school, and and found my way, um, and then ultimately went to college. I went from being a mechanic and working in the automotive industry to then venturing into the into the corporate world. Had a a very long uh, twenty plus year corporate career in the insurance industry, and then uh, beginning of this year decided to uh, dive headfirst into the entrepreneurial world, um, and a very new and risky one at that. Uh, so started a a Web3 NFT company uh, with two other co-founders who I who I met last year. <laughs> go big or go home, Anthony, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. So tell us, tell us the story. So, okay, so you go to high school, then you go to automotive industry, right? Because that's, I mean, it, it trades people. I'm assuming your father was some type of, what, what did your dad do? My father was fireman, um, FDNY, um, yeah. and then he he worked side jobs, of course. Of so course, he's a mechanic. Uh, like like um, every like every fireman yeah. that you know, they <laughs> always have four days on, four days off. What do you do? You make more money, right? So that's it. Uh, and so he worked three jobs, and and I worked with him. So eleven years old, I started doing tune ups and break break jobs and and all of that, um, helping him in the shop, helping him do construction, um, and so you know, I did that uh, uh, through college. And then at, after college, went into the corporate world. So, so tell me, what was, why did you go from auto mechanics to insurance? What was the, kind of the deciding factor, the, the trigger point that made you go, oh, hold on. I, I want to do something different? So, you know, I think uh, I was watching, um, I think it was a Michael Douglas movie. I was watching with my mother once and, and he had, he had the, the, the closet with all the suits. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, 
I'm going to wear a suit when I go to, when I go to work, you know? And, and so, so yeah, my mother drove me to that. She's like, that's what you want, you know? And, and I got good grades in school and all that kind of stuff. But I, I was always interested in data um, yeah. and organizing data. And, and ultimately that led to computers. Um, and so I went to, went to Pace University, um, uh, took a, a, you know, I got a, a management information systems degree. Um, I, after college, I, I got my first job with an investment bank, mm. um, and then went from an investment bank to, uh, to insurance. Oh, wow. And then, cause now this is, now you got to tell me there, cause there's a storm, there's thunder, there's lightning. Every time somebody goes from one specific area, either from entrepreneurship to corporate job or corporate job, there's always signs and symptoms. There's always thunder rumbling. And then there's lightning that goes, okay, I'm done with this. I'm moving on. So Tell us, what, what's, what was the thunder? What kind of started making you think about moving into a more entrepreneurial business? So, so I, was, I was with the same company for, for 20 years. Oh, um, so you know, very untraditional for, for the modern corporate world. Right? So yeah. I, I, I was loyal to it. But I bounced around in, the, in that company yeah, yeah. and always you know, challenged myself in different departments and all, all, all of that. Um, and you know, really especially, um, you know, over the last, you know, five to 10 years, um, it, I felt more and more like my destiny was out of my control. Um, oh, and, yeah. and so I, I was getting, I was getting to a point where I was like, okay, am I going to realize my potential? And now I've always led teams with, I'm a culture first leader. Yeah. Um, and so it was always about culture. It was about helping people grow leadership development, um, and helping people l- reach their potential. Mm-hmm. And so I just really was looking at, um, that, over these past five to 10 years, but never really thought of, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to leave my job, you know, at this, at this age that I, that I am, I always thought, you know, further, further in the future, but then web three hit me. Um, and so I started getting involved in NFTs um, mm-hmm. about a, a little more than a year ago, year and a half ago. And I was blown away by the technology. And then I was even more blown away by the community aspects of web three. And it felt like a new business model was, you know, really being developed before our eyes and it's is being developed before our eyes Mm -hmm. and that business model is all about empowerment and it's about um engaging the community to help build a brand and a company in a very very different way than um, traditional companies are 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 built and that was just too much for me i um I, i had to get involved and so i started just raising my hand volunteering my time working nights and weekends helping other projects out um for free um and and then through that um met the, the other two co-founders, so Manny Coates and Guillermo Puyal. And, you know, we started talking about, could we do something ourselves? Mm-hmm. And they're serial entrepreneurs. So they've been very, very successful um, exiting businesses. Um, and the three of us were just talking about what would it be like to start our own project? And then ultimately we decided to do it. <laughs> do you have, uh, are, do you have a partner? Do you have a wife? Do you have kids? Do you have any of those? Uh, I do. Yeah. I have a uh, very supportive and loving wife. And three and three daughters. Uh, so, you know. So how did that conversation go when you're like, okay, I'm leaving my corporate job to do this NFT stuff. I bet that there was like, that was over dinner or something like that, right? Oh, uh, it was over months. <laughs> <laughs> so first, because first it was, this isn't real. It's just yeah, a yeah. hobby. Um, yeah, yeah. And I've had lots of hobbies. I've, you know, brewed my own beer. I've oh, cooked. Nice. I've gardened i've done you know, made my own knives I've, I've done a bunch of different things Sweet. um and so uh you know so at first it was okay this is just another hobby yeah. um, but then as it was getting more real and more real and my wife saw um the potential in it um then she was like you know if you're gonna do it you know now's the time now's the time to do it so. I, <laughs> I remember the first time my wife's name's tracy and i remember the first time you know entrepreneur and all that good stuff and we're taking $75,000 out of the company that we share. And she's like, you're going to do what with $75,000? You're investing it? Uh, yeah, kind of. Here's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't looked back since. But that, that first conversation, when you're in a, in a long-term relationship or whatever you're with, making a big change, it does the, I mean, it doesn't affect just you. It affects everybody else, right? And you got three daughters as well. And so you think about their education and you think about, you know, what's the commitment because starting a company is not easy. Like time wise, there's, there's a lot of stuff to think. I mean, it's easy in principle, but there's a lot of work that needs to, needs to happen because you're wearing a lot of hats. Oh, so my my wife, my wife calls it uh, bulls and apes with breaks. 
<laughs> I think our wives would get along great. Um, so tell us for this, I, I'm really uneducated and I think there's a lot of stigmatism or not certain stigmatism. There's a lot of, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of cloudiness around NFTs. Can you, for the sake of the audience, explain to us what is an NFT? Sure. Um, it, I mean, the, the definition of an NFT is a non-fungible token. And that okay. means there's one and only one. Um, and that non-fungible token is what um, signifies ownership on a technology called blockchain. And blockchain is the real technology behind it all. That is um, equivalent to the internet when the internet first came out. And then all these websites were built on top of the internet. Well, blockchain is the technology that is the engine behind um, NFTs. And NFTs are tokens on that blockchain. And the blockchain keeps track of who owns it, who owned it before, how mm -hmm. much was it sold for. And so it's a ledger. The blockchain is a ledger. And it's, it's a public ledger. And so mm -hmm. anybody can access it from anywhere, um, which, which is one of the powers of blockchain. So now you don't have an intermediary. And I, I use the analogy of um, uh, a car. Okay. And a car, you've got a title. And a yeah. title is equivalent, in my mind, of the NFT. And okay. so the title signifies that you own the car, Correct. just like an NFT signifies that you own something else. You own yeah. a membership, you own something that's attached to the NFT, um, a piece of art. Um, and in order to transact with a car, you've got to go to DMV. Mm -hmm. And DMV is that intermediary. They're the ones who process it. They're the mm -hmm. ones who say who, own, who owns what. They keep the register. Um, if, if that title was an NFT, you and I would be able to exchange a car for whatever yeah. um, over the blockchain without using DMV, without ah, using that intermediary. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So what does Bull and Apes do? What do you guys do? So, so we are, um, uh, we have two, two pieces to the, to the, the value puzzle. Mm -hmm. Um, number one is the, uh, tr more traditional, I'll call it traditional. It's a, still a young, uh, <laughs> industry, but, um, it's a, a profile picture type of a, of an art. So we okay. have our bull character yeah. and there's all different traits and we have like 500 or so traits, like different, um, furs, different, um, uh, clothing, things that people could relate to. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so people have fun using that and they use it as their avatar in, on mm -hmm. Twitter or in discord and whatever, whatever apps and there's different rarities that go into it. So it's almost like, um, uh, card game collecting when mm -hmm. you open up, you get a super rare one or you get a common one. Yeah, and so yeah, people yeah. get excited about that. But the real value I see is it's also, um, a membership card. Um, and our community is called the inner circle and mm -hmm. our inner circle is all about living your best life. And we, we look at helping people grow health, wealth, relationships, and fulfillment. Um, and so from those four uh, pillars, we're delivering value within the community. One of the ways, as an example, when you have this membership card, mm -hmm. just like if you had a membership to a country club, mm -hmm. you could come in and you could use the services in a country mm -hmm. club. Well, we have that same thing that we're building out in the oh. Bulls Names Inner Circle. So we've got connections to venture capitals um, and syndicates. And so we have a lot of connections there. So what we've used is our connections. We're, we're actually bringing VC deal flow to our community members. Oh, and wow. so now they're able to invest in VC deals at a very low entry point that they would not have you know, otherwise had, had available to them. You know, that's one example. We have a lot of entrepreneurs in our community and they're helping each other out and they're incubating ideas. Um, we're helping too with, with, with some of our know-how, some of our marketing know-how. Mm -hmm. And so we're creating more of an entrepreneurial uh, community as well, where people are um, coming up with ideas and, and they're coming together and forming small teams to help put ideas into, into, into practice. I like, I like the model. I mean, for us um, at Urgio, the company that the major company that I, I am the CEO of that, uh, is we roll up companies. So when companies, especially trade companies, they if they go to the market and they try to sell their company by themselves, it's very difficult for them to either one sell only eighty percent of the people that go to market for their businesses, small to medium enterprises, yep. actually get a buyer. It's like eighty percent. So you say, "Oh, I'm going to sell my business." Uh, no, it's not. So when they come to realize, "Hey, listen, I want two million dollars for my plumbing company." And they go, no, nobody wants to buy it. And then the only people that want to buy it want to buy it for $800,000. Yeah. They go, oh, shit, I'm, 
I'm, you know, 45 to 50 years old. I don't want to be a plumber for the rest of my life. How do I get out of this? Right. I, I can't retire the way that I thought I was going to be retired. So what we do is we roll companies up. So we'll look at other plumbing companies within an area, kind of have them merge together. So over a period of time, they hit their, you know, two to $3 million. So it's over a longer period of time. So by joining, by creating a hive uh, mentality, a, a cooperative that we call. So you guys are doing very something similar. That's really cool because sometimes, and that's, I think, what we've missed in the past kind of decade is everybody's wanting to do everything by themselves. And they come to realize that yep. the community, right? I mean, um, I, I'm assuming that you come from an Italian family with Italian heritage, right? So you yes. got it probably like my very good friend, Dominic Rubino. He's got, he says, I have a small family, 142 cousins only. <laughs> <laughs> I can and, relate. <laughs> uh, and he says, you need anything, you want anything. He goes, my cousin, my cousin, my cousin. And yeah. I just absolutely love that. You know, Christmas time, we always go to his house because his house is full. It's got like 50 people all the time. It's just, and that is the beauty. I love when people are at my house, kids running around everywhere. You feel the most happy, fulfilled, creative. The joy of living comes from not just living together, but working together. And I think that that sense of community, I just absolutely love what you're doing because it enhances the human experience, but also leverage a more kind of prosperous mindset. It takes a village to raise a family. And yeah. so I think the same way is you create that environment and we use what we thought was social media. But if it's a closed knit membership, it's kind of like a family. Like you don't let any douchebag come in. Like, no, that's eh. right. And, and we set values um, up front of who, who we are and, and respecting each other is, is really at the forefront of their problem solving, um, you know, helping to, to drive and be excellent, um, but, but doing it in a helpful way. Um, and I've, I've had people reach out to me already. So we, we uh, launched May 31st. So okay. we're relatively new. Um, and I've got people that have reached out to me and they've said, I have never felt so accepted. Oh, wow. So accepted in my life. Um, I can't tell you the spot that I was in before I joined this community and where I am now. And that was the first time I spoke to them. So it wasn't like it was me. Yeah. It was the community coming together, right? And it's and so what we're doing with Bulls and Apes is we want to put the framework in place. And and this is it, it's funny because um, in, in the corporate world we've been going on this decentralization management style mm -hmm. for a while. You know, went from highly centralized. And to de more more decentralized, we don't call mm. it that, but we call it empowerment, and we we say that we want the decision makers at you know at the point of uh, of decision. And so my leadership style has always been around culture, values, establishing the core, and then letting people do their thing and reach their potential. And I feel like the Web three space, the NFT space, is taking that to the next step, where it's not just the company that is building out the brand, um, but we also have our community who are our NFT holders um, and somebody on, on Twitter, this guy, um, Ben Jammin, um, framed it the best. I thought he, you know, you're not a shareholder. You're not buying part of the company mm -hmm. when you buy an NFT, although a lot of people think, think, think like that. Uh, but you're also not just a customer. You're not just buying a product. Um, and so he, he said that you're a stakeholder. And I thought that was a good representation. Mm -hmm. of it. You know, it's somebody who has skin in the game, somebody mm -hmm. that cares about it, somebody that can, that can own and take action um, with their with their investment and help build that brand, either by you know promoting it, by uh, posting on social media, or by creating such a positive experience in the community that other people want to join it, and therefore their membership card will grow in value, mm -hmm. which is quite different than you think about the country club one, right? So your country club, you buy your membership, mm -hmm. um, and when you walk away, you walk away. You don't own your membership. You can't go and sell it to somebody else. Um, imagine if you own that membership. Maybe you'd put more into that country club and try to make it a better experience. And so it's not just a country club building it, but you're helping to build it as well. Yeah, it's uh, for for somebody who I think I have a very flexible mindset. I don't have a fixed mindset. I'm very flexible, although I am a middle aged white guy. A lot of people like, oh, white guys are fixed mindset. No, no, no. I'm very flexible. I understand. I embrace inclusivity and change. It is. It is hard to grasp though, right? It, there, uh, there's a lot, so much learning that needs to happen to be able to understand the concept because a lot of people see 
block when when people hear blockchain they go bitcoin bitcoin risk lose all your money right and so then all of a sudden they've got these negative connotation attached to you know anything that's attached to blockchain and go why would i pay you know an image that i can clip or do a screenshot of and and basically steal but it's not just that and i think what you're demonstrating is that what you're talking about is transformation and not necessarily just transactional. And I think that people are seeing it in a transactional state, but it's what you're demonstrating, what you're building is more of a transformational state or engagement. It is. is. And, and part of the issue is that um, people haven't built real businesses around this yet. Um, So it's highly speculative, right? And it's, you know, it's, it's, it is, uh, it is a gamble. It is a, a lotto ticket that you're scratching off and you're hoping that you get, the most rare one in the collection, because that's yeah, going to be yeah. worth a hundred times what you paid, you paid for it. Yeah. There is a lot of that. I see a lot of irrational behavior in the NFT space. There's a lot of um, people that are scamming and just looking for quick, quick cash. Yeah. And they're just going to walk away from the project. It's happened to me. You look at my wallet and my digital wallet, it's public. Yeah, anybody can go and look. I've have a lot, I got a lot of mistakes in there. So I learned <laughs> before I started, started a project. I lost a lot of money. Um, and I made some money too, um, but you know I learned along the way. And, and you know what I learned is that you know there is some power in here, but there's a lot of bad actors. And and um, I kind of like that we're in a bear market right now in mm-hmm. the NFT space because a lot of the bad actors are are moving away because it's not quick, easy money anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you have a lot of people who are learning. All right, okay, who's still here? Who's still doing podcasts? Who's still reaching out to communities? Who's still building? You know, and those are the real people that are helping to to push this forward. So I'm 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 very very optimistic about it. Um, but we are in that state right now where the bad actors are getting a lot of the of the press and the publicity, um, and and there's a lot of people who are very speculative, highly speculative inside the inside the space that are just flipping and hoping for the 100x. And so it's hard to see the real value through all of that noise. And and that's why I'm t- personally and bulls and apes. You know, we're on a mission to try to onboard people as much as possible, as safely as possible. So we're for free, not just for our community. We're putting out two courses that will be published over the next couple of weeks, an NFT 101 course and an NFT security course that teaches you how, teaches you about NFTs and then teaches you how to um, buy NFTs safely. Um, so we're going to be putting those out for free for anybody. Um, that, that that's something that we, we think is important. Well, well, think about it when you think about, and I, I'm just, I'm going to relate back to the 1800s when people came in and they got off the boat, they got a chuck wagon, they got a horse and they started heading West. The promise of appropriate of of a property was risky, right? There was a lot of, you know, there's a lot of bad people out there and, and trying to, you know, do everything they can to steal. But ultimately the, the benefit is there as well. So it is a, Un, I don't call it called the wild wild west, but it is unregulated. It, it is. is people will take advantage. There are it. It's disappointed that even in 2022, people are just kind of so self interested and just nasty. There's just still nasty people in this day and age, which is beyond. But hey, hey, listen. Um, so that that's actually beautiful. What you're saying as well as what the the opportunity to be the first the early adopters demonstrate that there is safe there is risk but if you can mitigate the risk through education i always tell my kids i learned that in the military knowledge dispels fear so if you don't if you're fearful of something then find out why you're afraid of it and figure out how do you mitigate the risk to be able to do that right uh people say oh bitcoins are are risky and i'm i'm afraid of it okay what are you afraid of before you say a comment like that or NFTs, right? Now, why why are you afraid of it? Because you don't know anything. And I'll use the word ignorant, not in a condescending way, but you just don't know. The term ignorance means you ignore. You're, you're not investing time in learning of something. So, and, and, it's, and it's difficult to take that step too. And that's why we are putting these courses out there because I know – you know, for me getting involved, um, and I'm somebody that has, a, you know, a technology background, and mm-hmm. I've always been, you know, looking at disruption and disruptive technologies. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it was very difficult. It's not a book, you can't Google it. Yeah, it's, the information is just not there yet. Um, and so and you don't know who to trust who to follow. 
And so you're going in. And for me personally, um, those two people in particular that were talking about it that I that I did trust and I did you know go through it was you know Mark Cuban and Gary and Gary Vaynerchuk, so Gary V. Um, yeah. So the two of them were talking about it, and I was like, okay, that's when I started paying attention a little more because I trusted them more than just some random person on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I I dove down with what Mark Cuban was talking about. I dove down with what Gary V was talking about. And that's how I started to uh, learn a little bit more about it um, and start going down down the rabbit hole. Um, so you do have to, you know, you don't want to trust just anyone. Um, and especially there's this anonymity piece of it too, where, you know, everybody's um, a lot, not everybody, a lot of people are behind this cartoon character that they have as their profile picture. Mm-hmm. And so you don't even know, and they have their fake name. I mean, it's just fun. Like when we started, the, and, and so my two co-founders, you know, they, they're, they're more of the traditional business world also. We had people signing contracts with their screen name. So I'm like, what? Wait, what are you doing? I had one guy, I was doing an interview, in a, a live interview like this, but he had his like augmented reality. He had his profile picture on the camera. <laughs> so I'm like, Holy all right. shit. I gotta, I, yeah, I want to hire a real person. I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, oh I mean, it, it, it trust is something uh, it is. We, t- we talk about trust all the time. Like wh- who do you trust? Why do you trust them? And there's, it's a, it's a kind of complex hour long conversation on its own. Uh, what the next question for me is, so let's go to the title of the show. And why did you pick that title? Number one, that's the vision of the company. Okay. Um, that's our, that's our vision. Um, that's my personal, um, uh, what I believe that we're all born with special gifts. Yeah. Um, I'm, 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 a, uh, I'm a Catholic. I'm a God believing person. I believe God has given us something special, each one of us. Mm-hmm. And so me as a, as, as a leader, and now as, um, you know, a founder of this, this, this company here, I believe part of my mission in life is to use my gifts to help others unleash their potential, mm-hmm. their untapped potential. Um, and help them find their gifts and help them use their gifts to the best the best way that they could. Um, so that's that's what we want to do. We want to create a world of unlimited opportunity, which means to me that everybody has access to that opportunity, regardless of where they are in the world, what um, background they have, what experience they have. They should be able to have access to opportunity. That's what we believe. That is very yeah. That is that from what you've told us before is that that uh, that membership gives them opportunity and so you're actually living that vision which is really great so how do, so how does it work how does tell me the how do you add value to somebody's life give me something concrete that you guys do that adds value to somebody's life if they were to join your membership yeah so one one of them is is the the VC deal flow that we have mm-hmm. um, and and people having access to um, some cool way of investing, um, and it, there's risk in, involved with all all investing. But that's mm-hmm. one way that 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 was brought brought forward. The another way is we have um, a number of traits in in the uh, collection, and people mm-hmm. have congregated around some traits. Whether there's the skateboarding club that they created, or you know, there's um, um, uh, VIBs they call them, very important bulls because they're all wearing suits. Um, <laughs> and you know, you've got the Storno Bull Club because they have blood, bloodshot eyes. Yeah. Um, some of the bulls, and so people have congregated around these, and um, they, they have some they have some cool ideas. And and it's all it's all kinds of people too, right? It's people that have entrepreneurial experience. We have people who are who are very much blue collar and are just yeah. getting involved in this new tech, and they're they're leaders in these groups. And so we've partnered with um, some of the leaders of the groups to help do some marketing collaborations, help them do some of the charity work that they want to do. Um, and so we're giving them um, advice. We're mm-hmm. just giving them support just through our, our platform. And we're helping to connect people with, e- with each other. Um, and that's, what, that's one of the ways. Um, and there's, there's, you know, there's people that never, they've come and they said, I've never done this before. I had one person who reached out and was getting frustrated because it wasn't going as well as as they mm-hmm. thought it was it should be going and you know i personally was messaging with with him and just like hey this is your first time doing it it doesn't mean that just because it didn't work it's not going to work and then also it's okay if this one fails and you try you learn from it and you try you try again mm-hmm. and so just those words of encouragement um uh you know it could could be helpful it could be all some all someone needs from you know being frustrated and giving up to you know putting in perspective and trying again so what are what you think, let's go short, 
medium and long term benefits. Somebody wants to join. Somebody wants to go and and start dibbling and dabbling with NFTs. What's the and we'll take two ways. We'll go, you know, the positive and the risks. So short term benefit, medium term and long term benefit. What are your ideas and views on somebody? Let, let's take me, for example. I don't know a lot. What would I gain in the short term? Learning, number one. Um, so if you believe, like I believe, that this is Web 3, which means version three of the web, and, mm -hmm. and that means it's not going to be going away, just like you know, apps and social media were kind of that version two, that web two, um, and didn't, didn't go away. So if you believe that this is web three blockchain NFTs, mm -hmm. um, just getting involved is going to help you learn and mm -hmm. think of ideas and maybe you're entrepreneurial or maybe you're not, maybe you just, just want to get involved. That's one aspect. The other one is the community. Um, and bulls and apes is just one community. There's a lot of really solid communities out there mm -hmm. and, and all of them are a little bit different. Um, so it's, you know, if you want, if you're looking to connect, um, and you're looking to, to meet other people that are interested in the same, the same things, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, just a different way of, of connecting. And, you know, I know some people, you know, say, well, you know, did you need NFTs to start this company? Did you need NFTs to connect? No, of course you could connect, but it's like Instagram before mm -hmm. Instagram, you could share photos. There was Snapfish, there was Amazon yeah. photos, but Instagram made it easier and it was just the place that everybody just went to and was sharing photographs. And right. so you, that's where you went. You, that's where you went and shared photographs. So right now I feel like Web3 is one of those places where people will just happen to come together that are um, you know, go-getters, mm. that are interested in something new, that are collaborative and creative, and they happen to be coming together and they're, they're, they're doing some cool things there. And so what's in it for a business owner? So I'm, I'm a business owner. I've got, I'm 50 years old. I've got a whole bunch of endeavors, right? I have a rugby academy. I have, I do ultra vest with, so we serve underserved charities and I have a podcast. Why, what's in it for me? If I join this transactionally and, or for the benefit of myself and my company, those are all great. What does it mean? What does it mean to join? So for me, as a, as a, as a business owner, I would, I would want to learn, Okay. I, you know, I, I'd buy, and maybe it's not about the community and, you know, and all of these, um, NFT art related things, but I'd want to learn. Um, cause if mm -hmm. I, if I believe that web three was here to stay, just like websites and apps helped supplement businesses and help just start other mm -hmm. businesses and help mm -hmm. take other businesses to the next level. Web3 might be that place or it might not. Everyone's business is different, um, but I'd want to at least learn what that technology yeah. was. And maybe the technology is not quite there yet because you want to get to yeah, of you know, lar larger adoption. But right now it would be more learning um, for me if I was a business owner. I'd want to learn a little bit. I'd want to understand what some of the use cases are around it. I'd want to test it out myself. Um, and then I could start thinking about how could I apply, what, how could I apply it and what are the obstacles to get there? So that mm -hmm. I could watch as those obstacles are overcome, then mm -hmm. I would know, okay, now I'm going to jump in because I got, the, I got some ideas, um, but I know where the obstacles are. And there's, there's some pretty significant obstacles, um, you know, for sure, before we get to larger adoption. Um, but, but that's, 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 that would be my advice okay. to a, a business owner. So what's the medium term? What's your anticipation? Cause I think th this is going to be more speculative than anything else, but what's, you know, three years from now, what do you think? So I decide to join today and I'm joining the community. I'm interacting. What do you think is, will be the benefit over a longer period of time of doing this? What's your, where do you think this is going within? And I'll go, I won't go too far away, two years to three years. So I'll talk about it from Bulls and Apes, then I'll talk about it more, yeah. more broadly. So for Bulls and Apes, we are, we are big, ours, we're a community focused project and we want to help empower people to live, live their best lives. And for us, you know, we believe that that's going to be right now, it's largely in this application called Discord mm -hmm. um, and over Twitter, but we believe that the metaverse is going to be something that is... Yeah, there's a movie called uh, Ready Player One. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we believe that people are going to be interacting in the metaverse. And I know for me personally, I'm like, all right, am I ever going to go to a metaverse to hang out with my friends yeah. and all that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I'll tell you what, my daughters who are, you know, 15, 11 and nine, um, they're doing it now. Yeah. We just don't call it the metaverse. I mean, they're in Roblox. They're in Minecraft. They're talking to their friends, they're building things, they're interacting. Um, so 
it is going to be a reality at some point in the future, I believe. And so for bulls and apes, you know, we want to be on the forefront of that. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we're all about building community and eventually that community is going to exist in the metaverse. Um, so that's, that's for us two to three years out that, that for sure is part of our, our, our vision. Um, now, when I look at it broadly outside of what we're trying to do, um, I mentioned the, the DMV. Piece. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there is a, there's a tremendous opportunity for disruption on intermediaries in oh, transaction. Yeah. And so if you think about every transaction that we do where there's an intermediary and it's even credit cards, <laughs> credit card companies, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's all of it. And so, you know, uh, when you try to buy and sell a house and everybody that needs to get involved for a closing, um, you know, I think there's a tremendous amount of disruption that's going to happen with the blockchain technology as it relates to intermediaries. And that, that is so true. You just look at the evolution, right? So I look at the evolution of, I, I can't remember last time I had the business card. Like you think about it now, people just go, you know, I'll look you up on LinkedIn. I'll go on your website yes. and here you are. Right. Um, when video games first started out, you know, uh, rainbow six and all that stuff, you got headsets and you played between, you know, guys would jump on and I started playing and then you talk to your buddy who was in a different place. You look at zoom and what we're doing right now, like there's, we're doing, I've, I, I've done business. So we hired a VP of sales out of Arizona that I, through COVID that I knew his wife, his kids, his dogs, everything. And I've worked with him for almost 18 months before we met face to face. Yes. And then when I met with him, I said, shit, you're a lot shorter than I expected. <laughs> Cause I would always, he'd, he'd set his computer up. So I, w I would kind of look up at him. I'm yeah, sure yeah, he yeah. was six foot tall. I, I was like, shit, you're shorter than me. I'm five, eight, you're five, six. I was like, what the hell? So the, but the point is when you think about it is go, Hey, listen, I, I, I see it as let's go down. I want a plumber. So when you're going to go for a plumber, you're going to go on the website and you see a list of things in the metaverse. You're going to put whatever you put on and you're going to walk down an alley and then you're going to say, you're going to see like the, the pretend bricks and mortar shops that people are going to buy at the front end of the entry for plumbers, right? It's, it's a pole position. Same thing. I think, what is it? Snoop Dogg that bought a property and an NFT pro. I don't know if that's the right word, yeah. an NFT pro or metaverse property. And people are buying the properties next to him. They, uh, they are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool when you think about it, but yeah, it's, it's happening. I think the risks associated with it. So long term. So short term, what's the what's the the, the darker side of blockchain and NFT in the short term for a guy, a CEO like me? He says, okay, listen, there's a future in this. I want to dibble. I want to learn. What's the short term risks? So short term risks for somebody launching an NFT and also someone purchasing an NFT. Uh, so launching an NFT. I'll tell you what, um, you know, we, we went in saying, oh, we, you know, hey, we're, we're not just a couple of kids, you know, that don't know how to run a business. We've run, I've run big companies, you know, multi-billion dollar global organizations. Uh, my two uh, co-founders, they've been very successful entrepreneurs, very successful. And so we went in, we're like, oh yeah, you know, we know how to do this. We know how to do that. It's going to be great. Man, getting attention in the NFT space with all of the hype monsters that are out there oh, yeah. and all the, these kids who don't know how to run a business. Let me tell you something. They know how to run social media. That's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, man, you better, you better know how to run social media. You better know how to grab some attention. And most importantly, um, don't underestimate how much time and energy and, and focus you need to put on building a community building people that are engaging and interacting, which means you need to be engaging and interacting. Even though you know in the back of your head, you also need to run a business. Mm -hmm. You also need to engage with the community. Um, and I think a lot of people who are coming in from more of the traditional business world into Web3, uh, are go they're going to underestimate that for sure. They're mm -hmm. gonna treat it like a product and they launched a product and the customers are just gonna go and use their product. It's not Web3. You, you need to be ingrained in the community. It's the community. Don't underestimate the energy and the focus and the resource that you got to put into managing the community. Um, it's really, really important. Um, on the NFT purchaser side, um, the, the beauty is that you're removing intermediaries. 
Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, when you remove the intermediary, that means there's no 1-800 number to call when something <laughs> goes wrong, right? And so, and it's final. <laughs> when that transaction happens, there's no undo. There's mm -hmm. no, no, oh, whoops. You know, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so when you click on a bad link and somebody drains your wallet, your wallet got drained. Drained. Shit. Drained. And I've seen it happen multiple, multiple, multiple times. And so safety is so important there. There is no Bank of America to call. There's yeah. no American Express. There's no Amazon. Um, you, you can't, there's nobody to call. It's, it's, it's peer to peer. And so mm. when you click, yes, accept, it doesn't matter that it was a scam. Sure, you could call the cops, but the scam probably originated from somewhere that there's no jurisdiction anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you've got to be really, really careful. Wow. And so I, I know one of my, um, one of the guys that works with us, um, he was big into Bitcoin and he told us what was a month ago or two months ago when there was a big drop. Um, he's like, oh, I lost a whole bunch of money, but it was only, it was only paper money because he says, you know, I only started with something with 200 bucks. I had a whole bunch of money in there. I didn't lose anything, but he lost, I guess, digital currencies, the proper way to express that sure. term. Crypto, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. So um, it, it's, again, the value of it as well. So how does how does that, so the, that's the, what do you see as a medium risk, uh, sorry, a, a medium term kind of big risk? So when you're in, when you, so this one I'm going to take is once you click, you click, there's no cops, there's no intermediary, there's no risk mitigation, there's no reimbursement. That's kind of, you have to do a lot of, I guess that's where the community really comes into play and say, Hey, Anthony, do you know about this one? Do you know about this right. one? And therefore you share a lot of information. Oh, don't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Right. So. Yeah. That's um, a big part. And what we say is um, follow, follow the official links. Like we have an official links channel in our discord. Oh, we gotcha. have official links on our website. Always click on the official links from a reputable project. So do your research, make sure it's reputable. Hopefully it's from a founder that's showing their face like, like, like we do, you know, mm. we, we have videos, we're always out there. Um, so don't, don't just trust an anonymous person that's out there. Don't only click on the, ofi the official links. Um, that's what we, we, we tell people to do. The other thing to do is it's really easy to create a digital wallet. Mm -hmm. So you could have your assets, your NFT stored in one wallet, and you could purchase new ones in, in a, in a blank wallet, a burner wallet. Um, and, and that's the safest way to do it. So this way, if you click on the wrong link, there's nothing for them to take. Yeah, gotcha. And so now you buy the NFT. Okay, it's safe. Then you move it to your, your real wallet. Gotcha, model. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So there's, there's easy steps to take, but people who are new don't know, don't know that. Yeah, yeah. You need coaching and mentorship. Absolutely, 100%. So what's the, what's the medium term biggest risk that you see? Two or three years from now, what's going to be the kind of the the – the, the baddest thing that can happen. So as, as a business owner, um, uh, regulation is going to come. We mm -hmm. know that. Um, and so just like it was with, with the, with the internet, with web one, mm -hmm. um, the regulation sometimes made sense. Sometimes it didn't make sense mm -hmm. until it kind of equalized somewhere in the middle. So there's going to be regulatory issues that we're going to have to deal with as business owners over the next couple of years, uh, two to three years um, that, that will come. Um, and some of it will be frustrating and there'll be some mistakes that are made because the regulation will go this way, then that way, as mm -hmm. the regulators are trying to learn what is the right way to, to regulate. So I think that's, um, that's a risk that we, we think, we think about, um, over the next two to three years. Um, I come from a highly regulated industry, so I'm used to working with, with regulators. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable that we'll be able to navigate through it. Um, but as, as business owners, you gotta be thinking about the regulatory aspects. They will come. Um, they will. Come. I mean. Yeah, I'm sure that AML, anti-money laundering, for those people who don't know. So I, I worked with um, games and, and esports and stuff like that. So with gaming, AML is very big. So you have to have, you know, very solid um, technology that really monitors. But I mean, AML happens all the time from one place to another. And so I'm assuming that AML would be something that kind of fits in um, sooner than later. I, I agree. I agree. So that that... And it's going to be interesting to how that happens because part of um, what makes blockchain appealing to a lot of people is the anonymity piece mm -hmm. of it. Um, and so how do you have the anonymity piece 
yet you have the know your customer and the anti-money laundering aspects incorporated in. So um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that develops. I, age is a big thing too, right? So you want to make sure that, and, and again, gaming, right? Who I can pick any kid can pick, you know, I was born July 29th, 1971 and still play like there's no, yeah. <laughs> but then they have to match with credit cards, but then credit cards have intermediary. There's a lot of steps to, to put in gaming. There so are. with this, there's a lot more. And, and I want to come back to that, that community, especially when you think of, you know, back in the days of caveman, safety was key. Safety was in numbers, right? So we got into a cave and safety was created in numbers, right? So same thing happens in, in the animal kingdom. You know, we, the, when you look at gazelles eat, uh, the ones at the center of the herd just put their heads down, their ears are down. They're just munching on grass. They don't even bother. The ones on the fringes are the ones that kind of eat, look up, eat, look up, eat, look up, you know, look up for the lines, look out for the lines, look out for the lines. And so the tighter you are in a community where what Anthony is saying is that the more you are surrounded with trusted people within a network in a community, then the more opportunities you have to, I say the conversion rate will be better. The conversion rate of safe transactions, if we want to call yeah. it that, is much, much higher. And that's one of the things that we have now in our community is we have some volunteers of um, NFT veterans and they've oh. created the, the BAP scam squad. Um, and so they, they're a scam squad. They have a Twitter profile. They have their own channel within our discord and they're there to answer questions for people um, so that if people have doubts or concerns, so the community is helping the community um, and, and they get some recognition. So they have a special role, a special title so that they're known as the scam squad um, and, and they're, they're offering up their knowledge um, to other community members. And so oh, wow. that's, um, that's the community helping the community. Um, and it's, it's been very effective. Sweet. Um, Anthony, what is the reference material of choice for you? What's the book that you have relied on for most of your career that you always fall back to? And, and I say book, movie, whatever, that you feel is the most influential in who you are today and how you lead and or manage an organization? I'm going to name three. If That's you all mind. right. In order so of priority. <laughs> we, we've got uh, um, Built to Last, oh, Leadership yeah. is an Art, and Zen of Listening. Zen of Listening. I don't know that one. So I believe, and I've taught, I've taught a listening course, um, throughout my, my career. Um, and I, I went on the course myself once and you, you go into the course and you're like, yeah, learn how to listen. I'm like, <laughs> I know how to listen. Um, and, and then, then you go through and you're like, oh, maybe I don't know how to listen that well. And, you know, and so, um, you know, there's, there's, there's steps involved and the Zen of listening, um, is a really, it's a short book, um, but it's really good. It gives really good tips on how to listen. And my career would have hit, um, a ceiling if I didn't read that book. Oh, wow. um, and that, that book taught me um, how to put myself in the shoes of the executives that were ahead of me. Mm -hmm. um, and without that, I would have hit a ceiling and I wouldn't have progressed my, my career about, about 10 years ago. Um, I, re I read the book and it, I had my first one-on-one -on -one with, with an, uh, like an official executive and I was really excited. And the first week, it was, it was for an hour. And the first week I'm in there and um, he's like, all right, Anthony, how's everything going? I'm like, oh, it's good. And I had all my talking points of where yeah. we are with the project and all this meeting was 10 minutes, then done. Um, and then next week, same thing. I had all my talking points and I was, I was walking, I was, I was driving home. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, shit, Anthony, you're, you're blowing it. You're blowing it. This is your chance. You're blowing it. The meeting shouldn't last 10 minutes. Um, and, and, um, I was reading that book at that time. And so, and, and in the book, it talks about putting yourself, if, if you're watching a movie, you're in the plot, you're yeah, thinking yeah. about the actors and the actresses and where's it going and what's yeah. going to happen next. And so the concept in the book was put yourself in that person's movie. And so I did it and I started asking him questions. And then I was taking his number one issue, even though it had nothing to do with my job, I was problem solving it for him and mm -hmm. then playing it back the next week. And next thing you know, the meeting was less than an hour. Next thing you know, he was requesting follow-up meetings. Next thing you know, he's offering me a job on his on his staff. Um, and you know, it's it, it, I'm telling you, it it it, it changed my career. <laughs> the art, I I am. I mean, 
I strongly believe, I mean, I apply this to the podcast, you know, for the audience, none of this is scripted. We just go and have a conversation and I truly am curious. I actually listen. And for the first time in my life, I've got an executive coach and uh, I am so good at this. I do it uh, unconsciously capable of doing this. I turn the questions on my coach hundred percent of the time. She's like, you're doing it again. I was like, Oh shit. Sorry. What? Sorry. Where did we want to go from now? And she's like, no, it's not about me. It's about you. Sorry. 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 Okay. So what is it that you want from me? She's like, can you stop asking questions and answer my questions? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you a hundred percent. When you are selfless in a communication, a lot of people don't know that, that my wife calls it manipulation. So, um, and hey, babe, I always get the best price for everything. Like she always says, how do you do it? I just, hey, what's important for them? So if making the sale is more important than the amount, anyways, I won't go down that path. But anyways, what was the second book that you had mentioned? Leadership is an art. Why that one? Because um, it, it really, it really talked through, um, it really, it really talked through culture mm -hmm. um, in, in a company. Um, and, and it really resonated with some of my core values around, um, people being born with different gifts, mm -hmm. um, and, and in it, um, you know, the, it, and it's written by the, the CEO of a, of a, of a furniture company and, you know, in it, there's, there's untapped, uh, talent, um, that he was able to find in people that were on the, on the team by asking them what they're good at essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it wasn't, it, it, sometimes it had nothing to do with the job that they actually had. Um, and so that's the art part of it is that it's not leadership isn't scientific. Mm -hmm. um, it's about people and it's about managing people and it's about being flexible as a, as a leader um, and humble, um, humble enough to, to ask the questions and to, you know, to um, you know, not assume that, you know, the answers. It, it's uh, for those people who have not paid attention to the first, what did, you know, when Anthony said, how did you grow up and, and his dad for his skills and his trades and what he does and the attention that he does. I don't know if anybody's picked up on it, but you, you see that. And then all of a sudden you hear this leadership component of empowering people it comes from his mom and, you know, empowering him, giving him everything that he needs, making sure that he's facilitated, that he's empowered to do it. That just doesn't come from, from nothing. And so that's one of the reasons why we ask these questions. I want to make sure that people understand that there's connectivity on how you were raised and how you treat people as well. And so that the way that you're doing it is something that you're passionate about and, and because you felt good about it and you want to give that, that feel good about leading people properly. Right. I'm sure your mom was strict with you, right? She oh, yeah. just, <laughs> I like, I use it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When, when, that, when, when, when your mom used your full name and called you back, you're like, Oh shit, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Uh, what's the first book again and why for built to last. Um, and oh, so yeah. this book my favorites, really yeah. focused on, um, the importance of having vision and values at the center of your company Agreed. and that when you have the vision and the values, that is what's built that, that it, it is, it's built to last. We hire fire performance management on our four, on our five core values all the time. Um, get shit done, demonstrate care, well-grounded act on data and learn and innovate. And we all the time, we look at people and we go, Hey, listen, did you live those values? We'd give shout outs when you do performance management, when we fire people, it's the same thing. I mean, we don't fire necessarily people because we got a good crew when somebody's kind of going, Oh shit. You know, you kind of stumbled on that one. You know, which value did you not live up to? And they go, Oh shit. Yeah. It's, it's that one. Right. So, um, good. Um, can you give us where, I mean, people are going to see at the bottom here, but I'm assuming you're on LinkedIn as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. And one of the things that I've just implemented now is a Calendly that I put out there. And I'm offering up 30-minute sessions with myself. If you have any questions around NFTs, um, you're concerned about um, making your first purchase, or you're curious, or you just want to yell at me that NFTs are a scam, <laughs> um, it's, it's, I'm putting it out there. Um, it's important to me. Uh, it, it, I, I mean it. It's important to me to, to, to help onboard people. 
Um, and so uh, I'm putting that out there for, for people. Um, we, have, we are having the NFT 101 course and NFT security course, which should be published in the next two weeks. So we're on LinkedIn. Uh, we're on Twitter. Uh, bullsandapes.com is our website. All of the information about our project is there. Certainly when the courses are, are published, they'll be available via the website as well. So bull and apes, bullsandapes.com. Um, my, my LinkedIn, Anthony Mongello, I'm happy to uh, answer questions. Click on the, the Calendly. I'll, I'll spend 30 minutes with you. Um, and so uh, those, that's, that's what I would recommend. Fabulous. Thank you very much. This, I mean, look at that. We're, we're up to the hour and I mean, I've got another thousand different questions, but I think uh, best if people <laughs> send you those questions directly. So I really appreciate your time, Anthony. This was really, Excellent. really fun. Excellent. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for having me. I had a good time as well. Fabulous. With that being said, please like subscribe and click that notification bell to know when the next episode comes out. Oh my goodness. Uh, my name is Martin Hunter. I'm the host of what CEOs talk about where today we translated, Hey, listen, what is through, what is web 3.0 and how do you live through it through NFTs and communities? So that's, that's the tactical side of it. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in to What CEOs Talk About. Make sure to click subscribe to get notified about future episodes or check us out at www.whatceostalkabout.com.